Good morning, Year 10. Welcome back after half term. Hope you had a lovely break. Uh, we're starting our circuit um, topic this term. And we're going to start with the simple circuit symbols. So remember, all you've got to do is uh, make the notes in your book. And for the recap quiz, all you've got to do is write down the symbol, the component and its use. Remember to pause the video at any point so that you complete the task. And we will go through the answers on the next slide. OK, so ready to check your answers? Here we go. We're going to start with the nice easy one, the open switch. This is so it does not allow electrical current to flow. Then you have your closed switch and this allows your current to flow. After that, you have your cell. This is what provides the energy to the circuit. And then after that, you have a battery. OK, so main difference here is that a battery is made up of two or more cells. OK, so it provides more electrical energy to the circuit. This one is a little bit more difficult for some people. Uh, this is a diode. It only allows current to flow in one direction around the circuit. So the arrow on that diode, the triangle, shows the direction of the flow. And then you have a resistor. This is a fixed resistor and it reduces the flow of the current in the circuit. And then leading on from that, then this one here with the arrow through is a variable resistor. It changes the resistance and therefore the current in the circuit. And the last one on here, this is a light admitting diode or an LED. So when light comes on, the current is allowed to flow. When the light goes off, the flow stops. OK, so those are the main ones. And then these are the ones that we use all of the time. These are what we call our common components. So we've got a uh, a few here for you. All you've got to do is the same idea. Write down the symbol, the component and what its use is. OK, so the first one is a lamp or bulb and it converts electrical energy into radiation as light. After that, we have a fuse. Uh, a fuse wire melts and breaks the circuit if the current is too high. And then we have a voltmeter. Voltmeters measure the potential difference in a circuit. And remember, a voltmeter has to go in parallel in order for it to work. And then we have an ammeter. An ammeter measures the current flowing in a circuit. And this one um, is a resistor of some sort. It's a thermistor, which is a resistor whose resistance is, varies with temperature. And then the last one is a light dependent resistor. OK, uh, a resistor. Whose resistance varies on the based on the light intensity. So we call that an LDR. So these are all the ones you need to know and be able to use for your exams. So please take time to look over them and revise them and make sure you know the symbol, the component and what it's used for. So to start off then, we need to know the difference between a series and a parallel circuit. So a series circuit is the one we call a loop. OK, all the components are connected in a loop. So from the battery, it goes to the bulb, from the bulb to the bulb or other components and then all the way back to the battery again. The parallel circuits tend to have more than one loop and we say they have a junction where they cut off into a separate loop. OK, so this here, if you have a look at the diagram, shows the bulb and then it shows this junction where it goes down to the second bulb. So this is your chance to make sure you know the difference. Uh, jot down a little picture of what a series circuit should look like and what a parallel circuit. Remember to draw the circuit diagrams, not the ones showing the actual pictures of bulbs and batteries. OK, so pause the video 
and what you need to do is fill in the gaps. So a current is the rate of flow of charge in a circuit. It is measured with a something and something are shown using the symbol something and are connected in what kind of circuit? That's what's missing here. The potential difference, also called voltage, is the electrical energy per unit of charge in the circuit. It's measured with something and something are shown using the symbol something and are connected in what type of circuit. Fill it in and then you'll find that in a just a moment the answers will come up for you to mark your work. An electric current in a conducting circuit is a flow of electrical charge. Conventional current flows from the positive terminal to the negative terminal round the circuit and is marked with an arrow. Circuit diagrams use circuit symbols to represent an open and closed switch, a lamp, a fuse, a cell, a battery, a voltmeter, a diode, an ammeter, a thermistor, a resistor, a variable resistor, an LDR and an LED. You need to be able to draw and interpret circuit diagrams using these symbols. Remember, a battery is two or more cells connected together. The electric current through a component is measured in amperes using an ammeter placed in series with the component. The potential difference across a component is measured in volts using a voltmeter placed in parallel with the component. Resistance is measured in ohms. Charge flow is measured in coulombs. Time must be measured in seconds. For electrical charge to flow round a closed circuit, there must be a source of potential difference in the circuit, either a battery or power supply. Potential difference is the energy transferred per coulomb. The size of the electric current is the rate of flow of electrical charge. We can calculate the charge flow using the equation charge flow equals current multiplied by time. You need to remember this equation. The current at any point in a single closed loop of a circuit has the same value as the current at any other point in the same closed loop. The current through a component depends on both the resistance of the component and the potential difference across the component. The greater the resistance of the component, the smaller the current for a given potential difference across the component. Current, potential difference and resistance can be calculated using the equation potential difference equals current multiplied by resistance. You need to remember this equation. At a constant temperature, the current through a resistor is directly proportional to the potential difference across it. This means that the resistance of a wire, called an ohmic conductor, remains constant. The resistance of components such as lamps, diodes, thermistors and LDRs are not constant but change with the current through the component. The resistance of a filament lamp increases as the temperature of the filament increases. The current through a diode flows in one direction only. The diode has a very high resistance in the reverse direction. The resistance of a thermistor decreases as the temperature increases. The resistance of an LDR decreases as the light intensity increases. A graph of current against potential difference for a resistor, a diode and a filament lamp have distinctive shapes that you need to learn. There are two ways of joining electrical components in a circuit, in series and in parallel. For components that are connected in series, there is the same current through each component. The total potential difference of the power supply is shared between the components and the total resistance of two components is the sum of the resistance of each component. Adding resistors in series increases the total resistance because the current through them is reduced and the potential difference is unchanged. For components connected in parallel, the potential difference across each component is the same, the total current through the whole circuit is the sum of the currents through the separate branches, 
and the total resistance of two resistors is less than the resistance of the smallest individual resistor. Adding resistors in parallel decreases the total resistance because the total current in the circuit is increased while the potential difference is unchanged. An electric current in a conducting circuit is a flow of electrical charge. Conventional current flows from the positive terminal to the negative terminal round the circuit and is marked with an arrow. Circuit diagrams use circuit symbols to represent an open and closed switch, a lamp, a fuse, a cell, a battery, a voltmeter, a diode, an ammeter, a thermistor, a resistor, a variable resistor, an LDR, and an LED. You need to be able to draw and interpret circuit diagrams using these symbols. Remember, a battery is two or more cells connected together. The electric current through a component is measured in amperes using an ammeter placed in series with the component. The potential difference across a component is measured in volts using a voltmeter placed in parallel with the component. Resistance is measured in ohms. Charge flow is measured in coulombs. Time must be measured in seconds. For electrical charge to flow round a closed circuit, there must be a source of potential difference in the circuit, either a battery or power supply. Potential difference is the energy transferred per coulomb. The size of the electric current is the rate of flow of electrical charge. We can calculate the charge flow using the equation charge flow equals current multiplied by time. You need to remember this equation. The current at any point in a single closed loop of a circuit has the same value as the current at any other point in the same closed loop. The current through a component depends on both the resistance of the component and the potential difference across the component. The greater the resistance of the component, the smaller the current for a given potential difference across the component. Current, potential difference and resistance can be calculated using the equation potential difference equals current multiplied by resistance. You need to remember this equation. At a constant temperature, the current through a resistor is directly proportional to the potential difference across it. This means that the resistance of a wire, called an ohmic conductor, remains constant. The resistance of components such as lamps, diodes, thermistors and LDRs are not constant, but change with the current through the component. The resistance of a filament lamp increases as the temperature of the filament increases. The current through a diode flows in one direction only. The diode has a very high resistance in the reverse direction. The resistance of a thermistor decreases as the temperature increases. The resistance of an LDR decreases as the light intensity increases. A graph of current against potential difference for a resistor, a diode and a filament lamp have distinctive shapes that you need to learn. There are two ways of joining electrical components in a circuit, in series and in parallel. For components that are connected in series, there is the same current through each component. The total potential difference of the power supply is shared between the components and the total resistance of two components is the sum of the resistance of each component. Adding resistors in series increases the total resistance because the current through them is reduced and the potential difference is unchanged. For components connected in parallel, the potential difference across each component is the same, the total current through the whole circuit is the sum of the currents through the separate branches, and the total resistance of two resistors is less than the resistance of the smallest individual resistor. Adding resistors in parallel decreases the total resistance because the total current in the circuit is increased while the potential difference is unchanged.
Okay, so your task then, now that you've got all the information about the circuits, is to draw a circuit diagram. And your circuit diagram needs to contain a lamp, a battery, a diode, a variable resistor, a thermistor, a circuit with two lamps in series with the battery, and a circuit with two resistors in parallel with the battery. Okay, so have a go and see what you come up with. Make sure you label them. I will see DLD, draw, label, and then do it. Unfortunately, we can't do the practicals at the moment, but we will get round to doing them when you're back with us. This last task is just about static electricity and electric fields. All you've got to do is fill out the words, uh, the sentences, sorry, and copy in the words from the boxes above. I will pop the answers on the next slide so you can mark it. If you managed to do all the tasks from today, well done. Remember, you are only doing an hour's worth of work. So make sure you do your hour. Uh, do not try and go over it. You do not have to do more than the hour. Hopefully, I've set you enough to keep you busy. OK, so here are the answers. Make sure you mark your work and we will see you for your next live lesson. Have a good week.